What's up guys, Chris here and in this video I just wanted to touch on a topic basically regarding posture and technique on the drums. Now I got an email asking, hey Chris, I'm at a point where I'm re-engineering my posture and technique because I've been drumming with bad form for years. Is this a learning process you had to go through? And that comes from Richie. Thank you for your question, Richie. Um, this was actually super helpful because, again, it's something I feel like is not talked about enough, even with my experience of, you know, having taken some drum lessons and just interacting with other drummers. It's something that's never really talked about, and it's pretty crazy because it's really the foundation of your playing, um, and also it will dictate your longevity on the instrument. A lot of these things come down to small misalignments and issues with bad posture that tend not to feel so significant, but over time, if you continue to manifest, will lead to perhaps serious injury or certain chronic injuries and just postural changes. Now, by no means do I have perfect posture or form or technique on the drums. I it's something I try to and I am working on and I do, you know, reevaluate over time, but none of us are perfect and you'll definitely find drummers who uh Phenomenal drummers, phenomenal drummers. I can definitely think of a few, but they don't have the greatest technique or the greatest posture when playing. Now, vice versa, I've seen drummers who have amazing posture and amazing technique, but they aren't the best at playing. It goes both ways. It really doesn't matter. What does matter, though, is your health and, again, your longevity and being able to continue to play your musical instrument. I think the most common issues basically come down to either having your seat too low or too high, too far forwards, too far backwards, the way you position your lower extremities, so the way you have your feet and your legs aligned, and same thing with the neck and the head, and lastly just the way you position and lay out your drum kit. All these variables are going to be very heavily dictated by your body's posture and your genetic structure. Some of us have longer arms, shorter torsos, perhaps we're taller, shorter. Um, there's a host of reasons for why you should aim to structure your layout and your drum kit setup to match your body. All right, so let's head over to the drum kit and see what this stuff looks like. First thing you're gonna notice is that obviously your knees and your legs are gonna create a sort of a V shape and that's going to really dictate your alignment. You don't want your bass drum to be directly in front of you or facing the audience because naturally that's gonna force you to turn even more to the left. So if I wanna face forwards like this, you can see my bass drum is slightly to the right. I'm now discussing seat height. I have it at roughly where I'd like to have it, which is pretty ideal for my body structure and I've gotten used to it over time. And that's pretty parallel with the snare. There's a tiny, tiny bit of an angle, but I think that has to do with the fact I have long legs and just different proportions from a lot of people. But generally, I'm still fairly parallel with the snare. What you're gonna start to encounter if your, if I can find this thing, if your seat is too low, and I'm down here for example, now you're gonna see that my legs are up here, so my knee is higher than my hip, which creates a lot of instability, and now my legs are gonna require a lot more energy and a lot more effort, but not only that, now I'm gonna be hunching over or leaning forwards, also, my arms are going to be higher up or much higher than they need to be. So that's, that's going to create a lot of extra tension. Um, and you're just going to find that over time, this is a lot more uncomfortable and it's going to just create a lot more issues with movements where now it's going to require a lot of extra energy and a lot of extra reach. And it's also, it, com it puts your body at quite a compromised position because now your hips are so low and everything else is pulling forwards and compensating to try and get to where you want to be at the kit naturally. Now, the other way around, if I have it too high, okay, so now I'm sat 
too high up. And as you can see, my knees are going downwards and this can be a common issue because drummers will like to have everything lower and sort of flat in front of them because it does make it easier to sort of move around the kit when you're high above them, right? You're not having to reach too far forwards or anything. But the problem here now is that you lose stability because you're so much higher and your knees are going downwards. Now you have less stability, but not only that, you're gonna find that firstly what's happening is because I'm down low, and naturally that's going to pull my body forward but you want to try align that is when you go back now you're hyperextending so you're going to have sort of that Donald Duck butt so to say um, and that is going to cause a lot of tension and unnecessary stress in your lower back in your hips and what will happen is you see I can't just rest my foot naturally like that it's going to be much more difficult so the problem with this is now I've created a lot of extra and unnecessary tension where all these muscles around and in my calf are constantly flexed and now they're in a tight position and they have to remain upright. Over time that's going to cause that can cause tightness and also you'll just find that you're going to have a lot less energy um, when you're drumming. So you're gonna wanna find a height that fits you perfectly. Now, with my drum stool, the highest it goes actually happens to be the perfect height for me. So, yep, so there you can see I'm fairly aligned. I'm pretty much parallel with the snare. It feels comfortable. Again, that V position with my knees, I'm facing forwards, more so towards this crash. So similar to having your seat too high up, if you sit too far back, what you'll find is again, you're gonna have that issue where now you're, now you're doing the hyperextension and you're putting extra stress on your lower back. So bring the seat forward, but not too far forwards because now if you're too far forwards, firstly, my knees and my legs are at a disadvantage, it makes especially if you're playing double pedal, that becomes a lot more difficult because your center of gravity isn't very aligned and now you're having to really utilize your legs and press down as opposed to kind of chilling more lower on the footboard. Also, what's gonna happen if you're sat too close, you're gonna end up naturally tensing up and getting a lot of extra tension in your upper, your shoulders, in your arms, your traps up here, everything is going to be all tight. And you can see because to do rock, I can't really stay naturally like this because it's too close. So naturally the body is going to compensate by flaring out to the side. And you can see this is not an optimal position. So if I sit back in my regular position where I'm aligned, everything feels normal, it's at a good height. And again, guys, this is gonna vary. So sit down and basically structure the drum kit around how you are sat in your seat. Try not to adjust yourself to the drums, but the drums to you. So I'm not having to lean extra far to hit that cymbal. And now this is creating all this extra tension. And remember what I said about motor patterns, where now this is just ingraining that sense of you know, being hunched over. And if you do this for years where you play super hunched over because you're having to reach or compensate or you, you know, you slouch when you drum. This is also another very common thing with drummers who will slouch and everything is sort of pulled forwards and there's a lot of tension here. And what happens is, especially as a drummer who is most likely playing for many hours either a day or a week or just playing that or playing like that for a long period of time is definitely going to have its issues and you'll see that with certain drummers who play hunched over a lot that's what they look like the rest of the day and they'll walk around with hunched shoulders that tight their chest is weak their back so I'm just pulling on my t-shirt so you can see my back a bit better, but if you're sitting here and you find that where you play generally, so say generally you're hit, you, you know, you groove on the hi-hat, if that looks 
like this and you and that's your constant position where you can see how my back is twisted my hips are twisted if you ingrain that then your body's gonna really accumulate a lot of structural issues in the long run it's going to ingrain that posture and those things get harder and harder to reverse the longer you do it for so when you're sat at your kit the way you sit normally and would play you want that to feel as neutral as possible you don't want to have to be compromised or in a you know constantly like twisting or leaning forwards leaning back again another thing is that I'm not having to reach super far for my symbols and they're not too close to me they're at a good place where again I'm not having to you know like they're right in reach they're right in reach I don't have to do anything ex you know crazy everything is in comfortable reach and aligned to how I sit at the drum kit now my layout isn't perfect but you know it is what it is and you want to do the best you can to have you know the bread and butter of your drumming which I think for the most part is just doing a simple groove on a hi-hat or with a cymbal um, open, in an open-handed sense that you're not having to compromise or compensate by doing any drastic um, sort of changes in your posture and have to maintain a, a rigid position you know So yeah guys, this isn't something I want you to be losing sleep over and stressing out about and thinking, oh my gosh, you know, should I even touch the drums now? I'm going to injure myself and this and that. I mean, I'm sure most of you aren't thinking that. But I'm not trying to scare anyone. I'm simply trying to put forth, as my friend Richie here has emailed me and brought light to, is that posture and technique is super important and at the very least it's undermined. I think one of the best things you can do is rather than to really just stress out about this and you know shoot your cortisol levels up and worry about how you know if everything is perfect to a T you know that's never really going to be the case in my opinion because your body is constantly changing perhaps you gain weight you lose weight or you grow taller um, you may be undergoing injury or whatever it is and that compromises the way you play and the way you sit at the drums so I think it's just important that over time that sort of the take-home message here is that over time you reevaluate and you monitor your playing and the level of comfortability that you have at the drum kit and at sort of what level of ease you have and can you move around fluidly on the drum kit without feeling rigid or feeling that certain body parts are compromised or compensating because all these minor things over time will be solidified by your body the same way that exercise and drumming itself does it it's through motor patterns and re repeat uh repeated action and basically doing the same thing over and over again your body ingrains those things so the better that you can polish up your your posture and your technique on the drums the better success you'll really have playing the drums or whatever instrument that is both short term and long term if you feel any sort of sharp pain then stop and I'd say go see a doctor again I'm not a professional so I don't want to give direct advice on what to do in these situations but this is just general advice that you can use to sort of monitor your playing and some good pointers to keep in mind over time but until then guys I hope you enjoyed the video and check out my Instagram if you haven't already that's Chris Jenkins underscore drums and I post daily content there daily believe me I'm constantly editing and filming for that thing I do drum lessons collabs, remixes, drum solos, drum covers, etc. So check that out. Also subscribe if you haven't already. If you want to see more videos like this where I try answer questions and provide some of my experience um, 
and yeah, just things that us drummers can relate to and can encourage each other with. And yeah, if you like the video, dislike the video, do it, tell me why, comment below, I respond to everyone. And until then, I'll see you in the next video, guys. Peace.